Well, we had already seen a loss of short-term momentum from the NASDAQ 100 and its tech constituents. But just today, we saw a breakdown from the consolidation phase that had ensued. So the breakdown was associated with gaps down for both the uh, NASDAQ 100 index and a lot of its uh, sort of bigger constituents like Google. That gap down is probably of the breakaway nature because it occurred after a good strong up move. So that suggests that this pullback will continue. As mentioned, it does reflect a loss of short term momentum. Intermediate term momentum isn't great either, and there is room to oversold territory. So we try to use support levels as a gauge of downside risk. And for the NASDAQ 100, it's about 8 maybe 9% below current levels, looking at previous lows and highs and also the 200-day moving average. Of course, a decline of that magnitude would be pretty significant and pretty painful, but we would see it as something that's corrective within the scope of the long-term uptrend, which, of course, had gotten very steep recently. Yeah, 8 to 9 percent would certainly be more than uh, many are, are expecting, I would think, Katie. Well, what about some individual names there? You mentioned Google. Well, what's that chart looking like? So Google, as mentioned, gap down, and this follows the gap up in response to earnings last week. So that gap down leaves what we call an island reversal pattern on the chart. It's a very short-term pattern, so the implications are only really for the next couple of weeks or so, but it reflects a loss of upside momentum, kind of a last-ditch effort to push higher that then fails and leads to the closing of that earnings-driven gap. Now, it does support additional downside follow through for Google or Alphabet. And for uh, that one, the support is also about 7 maybe 8% below current levels. And if you look at the chart, you can see that would really just be a pullback to the breakout point. So we would view that as very healthy and something that's very likely to be met with buyers that felt like they missed that breakout. So if you do want to shift, Katie, now to the groups that essentially work today that do well cyclically when the economy does well, when rates go up. We saw strength in materials, financials, energy, industrials, healthcare. Which sectors or stocks look the best? So with a pullback, if it does persist like we suspect it might, naturally you'll probably see more defensive positioning. We're in the camp that 10-year Treasury yields will see a so-called retest, kind of like the tech sector, but maybe not quite as dramatic. And with that, you tend to see interest grow in areas like REITs and utilities, mm -hmm. selected areas within healthcare and consumer safety. So I would expect it to be a bit more defensive, but for that just to be short-lived. I think the more cyclical sectors will be more neutral in relative strength terms. So that means they're probably mixed where there's some opportunities both on the upside and downside there. So you just have to take it by, you know, case-by-case -case basis. Katie, are there any areas that you think look very vulnerable? I mean, 8% on the NASDAQ. That 100 uh, is fairly vulnerable, but uh, we talk a lot about the Tessas of this world, the, the art complex. Uh, is the support levels for them further, further below the 8% the kind of pullback level? Yeah, I would say generally speaking, we're looking at either the 200-day moving averages or the March lows as initial support levels. So we'd have to look at them individually. We're looking for higher lows for the most part versus March because that's really the nature of the so-called retest that is underway. I would highlight the semiconductor sector. I think everybody's noticed that it really lagged in April. And, and with that underperformance, the ratio is looking at things like the SMHs versus the S&P 500, those ratios look pretty toppy. So it differentiates this current weakness in terms of short-term momentum and relative strength from past pullbacks. It does suggest it will be worse. It doesn't mean we have another 8 9% downside necessarily, but it would lead us to respect the short-term momentum, which, as mentioned, is still to the downside. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.